So now we're back, but we're gonna do something different this time. We're now starting with our exercises, which is fun. All we're gonna do is use the library bundle that was already provided, or you can download one from library.com, and we're gonna start that library Tomcat bundle. Then we're gonna deploy an activation key so that we're licensed. At that point, library is gonna ask us to do some setup to create our admin user and our portal name. And at that point, we'll have library up and running. And so the final thing we'll do is simply to add a logo, the Livingston logo, to the DXP platform. And there are some bonus exercises that you can feel free to accomplish if you want afterwards. We won't be going through, through those in the video. After you're done with this, you can go into the general section and then try to change your main domain name to use livingston.com. And then secondly, you, you can try going to the instant settings and choosing which settings that you want to use on the platform in the localization section. And then finally, you're free to try going to the user section, playing around the user section specifically in instant settings, and then try to add some default user associations there. So I already have a DXP Tomcat bundle downloaded on my computer. So I'm gonna to go to my PowerShell window here. You can navigate to the folder directly on Windows, but you can see I'm in uh, the C drive library folder which I created and within there I've created the bundles folder. I just unzipped my Tomcat bundle into this bundles folder and so from there I've navigated into the bin directory where we have all of our startup and stopping scripts for Tomcat. What I typically run, you don't need it here but just to get in practice you can start up Catalina Bat with the JPDA which will start your server in debug mode in case you need to debug some things. Or you can simply do Catalina start. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that command. You'll see this other window up here. Again, it says, you know, listening for transport on 8000, that's for the debugging. But Liferay is gonna be running on port 8080. And you'll see the Liferay logs from Tomcat start to print out here. You can see, for example, it's using Hypersonic as its database, which is the default. So for now, we're just gonna let OSGI and Liferay start up. And as soon as that's finished, we'll go on to the next step. All right, so we can see here from the, the logs, they're very brief here. So we have Liferay has started up, tells us how many milliseconds that took, etc. So going over here, the first time Liferay starts up, um, you'll see this basic configuration that you really only need to do once. We're going to specify our portal name and our admin user. Remember we have Josiah Copeland for our admin user with Livingston Hotels and Resorts. So I'm going to go ahead and enter that information here. Okay, let me go ahead and enter the portal name. I already had it done it once, so that's good. Livingston Hotel, Hotels and Resorts. Perfect. You can leave the default language, and then we're gonna press Finish Configuration. It's okay to just be using Hypersonic Database for now. All right, at this point, we're going to see this message at the top that says, this server has not been activated with Liferay Connected Services. So this is gonna be uh, the next step that we said we needed to do here. So we've started our Tomcat bundle, now we need to deploy an activation key. And this is a license XML file that needs to be put in your Tomcat folder, and you can simply put it in the deploy folder. That should work, you don't need to restart your server or anything. So let's go ahead and do that. I just have mine on the desktop for now. So I'm gonna grab this XML file and I'm going to copy it into Liferay Bundles Deploy. Once you've copied it here, you should see it disappear after a couple of seconds. There we go, it's gone. If we go over to our logs, we'll see here at the bottom, processing activation key, it's passed, license is registered, if we go back to our browser window, we can then go to localhost 8080 again. And 
the license is passed now we can log in with our new user and set that logo so at this point I've already logged on it's showing me this terms of use I'm just going to accept that it'll ask you to change your password I'm gonna use a very secure password right now don't save as well as a password reminder for this admin user and then I'm logged in and I'm gonna show you that login process just one more time so you just go here to sign in uh, again the the administrator is Josiah Copeland and it's not at liferay it's at livingston.com so I'm going to change that okay default password is going to be test so I'm going to enter that alright so we're here we're logged in now we're going to go and change our logo for our company you can see I actually already have this Livingston logo applied here so let me show you how I went and did that so I'm over here and remember this is the control menu and if clicking on this I open up the product menu and then from here remember there are two panels there's the control panel and then we have here site administration panel which is now expanded and so under here we want to go to pages and then we're going to go to this public pages section we're going to, going to click configure and it will give us two tabs look and feel advanced so here is where we're specifying the look and feel of the public pages of this website called Livingston Hotels and Resorts. So we're going to scroll to the bottom of the page and simply we're going to go to the logo section and I already have it here so you can change that. I'm going to just keep the current one selected but you can upload your own logo here and then press done and don't forget to press save. And there we go. We have our logo for our site. From there we can just go back to our site and we can see it here on the top left of the screen. We've completed all the objectives for this assignment. Good job, and let's go to the next exercise.